This is the Waitley Select Board meeting of June 15th at 12 noon. Uh, being recorded as uh, as a Zoom meeting. Uh, I need a motion to open a meeting. Nope. Oh, okay. Okay. We have two. Well, one item is the annual town meeting warrants, and the other items not anticipated. We want to go to the second item first. Okay. Well, Brian, what items, additional items do we have to talk about? Um, let's just talk about um, the Chapter 90 requests that are being presented, and Keith can tell us more about that. Okay. Um, I had submitted the, given Brian the project request that I have for Chapter 90 for this construction season. There's, I presented, there's four of them. I'll go through them all. The first one is, um, okay, you can, I, I can just read them out loud. Um, right. Chip ceiling that I need to do um, this later this month in June is 15,390. And that is going to be Straits Road and the south end of Long Plain Road from Straits Road down to the old dump about where Mike Morosky lives, where you were looking at those, that poll hearing. Okay. Okay. That's, that's one project. The other project is um, for Chestnut Plain Road for the repaving that will be done in conjunction with the sidewalk complete street program. And that one is 41,400. The other, the next one is I have put a, I, I put a project request in because we are doing this everything all now. I figured it'd be good to, for the excavator for the lease purchase. Um, and that was the first year is 38,000 for that. Now, as I told Brian, I'm not going to do anything with it until we see what the outcome of town meeting was. But at the same point in time, if we were having a discussion and you were going to be coming in and signing, I just felt that it was a good time to, to at least do that and, and just hold on to it until after town meeting. And the last one was for <clears throat> paving on Poplar Hill Road. Um, to we, we as we all know we're going to be reimbursed by Smith College and that's what their agreement is however the way we need I need to handle it is they're not going to pay us until after we do the work and so I've got to you know be a situation where we submit bills and then we will we will be able to so I basically need to open a project request to be able to pay the bills and then we'll get it taken care of when they pay us within 30 days afterwards. So that after my original balance in chapter 90 was 150 something thousand dollars, Brian has the exact number there. <laughs> after I do the projects that are those four projects that'll leave me with some somewhere in the vicinity of $15,000 left in my chapter 90 balance, which doesn't even touch my balance that will be coming, I'll be getting additional money July 1st for fiscal year 21. So we're in good shape chapter 90 wise. Um, the biggest thing that has, as we all know with the Waynesburg Road project, we've got that extra money. So at one point in time, we were thinking we were going to have to totally allocate all of our chapter 90 from this year, what we could plus all of next fiscal year, which now we're in much better shape. So if you don't use all the chapter 90 by the end of this fiscal year, it carries over to the next yeah, year? It's, it's just a rolling, it's oh. just a rolling, um, or I guess you could call it a revolving type account with mass DOT. Okay. And all the all the paving projects are they are they the the chip seal or stone and seal or are you no. doing an overlay? Um, the Chestnut Plain Road is going to be milling and blacktop hot mix asphalt, which is what Chestnut Plain is right now in that section. 
Okay, what what are the limits again on that one? That on Chestnut Plain Road is going from Christian Lane intersection to Haydenville Road intersection. Okay. Which is the, you know, the rest of Chestnut Plain Road was just resurfaced last year and is in very good condition. Okay. Can I ask a question, Fred? Sure. Yes. Go ahead. And this might really be a question for, for Brian. Um, I understand it's convenient for, again, collecting signatures to sign <coughs> um, the excavator money now. Um, yeah. But is that... Um, is that really wise? I mean, to, to what extent does it mean we're signing off on the excavator? Whatever happens at town meeting, how would, how, like, if we, say it were voted down at town meeting, which I don't expect, but what if it were voted down at town meeting? Then what, uh, you know, can, can he still go and buy it because we signed this? Um, I don't really know, and that's why I'm thinking this might be a question for Brian. Yeah, I mean, so you would <clears throat> you would have authorized Keith uh, Keith to spend that amount of money on an excavator, essentially. Um, right, which sounds like on paper going around town meeting, like no matter what town meeting voted, we just signed this stuff already. Well, he could he couldn't enter into a lease purchase. He couldn't enter into the lease purchase agreement, but presu okay. presumably he could spend it. And I don't think that he would, um, in a, I guess in a different manner, but, um, maybe it's best just to, just to wait then. I have no problem. I just figured I was doing all of my paperwork and I felt I would just submit it, but yeah, you're right. I, I have no problem with holding that. And then at the, it doesn't, it'll just mean to have to get signatures and, and maybe it could even be done at town meeting afterwards. If there, is that a possibility, I guess? or whatever the next time you are all to come in and sign. Yeah, why don't we just make an agreement today that assuming it passes at town meeting, we give the formal approval after town meeting. Just we get okay. together for two minutes, for you know, 30 seconds. Well, right. we're, meeting the next, we're meeting the next day anyway after but town meeting. your meeting is the next day. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. All right, why don't we hold off on that one? That sounds fine. Okay. Do we need a motion on these um, on these other three chapter ninety? And they don't need to be separate. We could put them all together. Okay. Well, then I would make a motion that we authorize fifteen k for the Straits Road and Long Plain uh, portion of Long Plain chip seal, the forty one plus some change k for the Chestnut Plain Road section uh, and I don't have the amount written down but the Poplar Hill Road uh, section that we're doing for Smith uh, to get reimbursed later. 47,600. Okay, 47.6K. Okay, second the motion. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay, so we need to come and sign them, them uh, Chapter 90 documents. Brian? Yeah, they'll... Yeah, so we'll need, two, we'll need the Chapter 90 documents signed and also the annual town meeting warrant signed. Right, okay. Hopefully this afternoon if you're able to come. Okay. Okay. That's, so she's going to the, that's all I have. I just wanted to also let you know we have our pre-construction meeting on Williamsburg Road tomorrow, and that should begin, could begin the next day. I'm not quite sure what the contractor's plans are, but we're on track finally to get that done. And um, other than that, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Keith, who's going to be on that meeting? Is that just with uh, Mass DOT or? It's um, the invitees are Brian, myself, um, the contractor, and our engineer. 
and I think City of Northampton. Okay. Okay, any other uh, items not anticipated on the agenda, Brian? Um, no, we never got anything back from the Waitley Inn, so I don't have anything to, to add to that. I'll follow up with Chip to see where things are at. Make Just make sure he's seen it. You know, we sent yeah. it to him. Yeah. Did you send right. it electronically? Um, or, it, yeah, Amy sent it. Yeah, Amy sent it in an email, I think. What is the it that was sent or not? That was that was the expansion of the description of the of the premises that's oh. allowed to serve alcohol. Okay. Um, they obviously they would. Well, we think they want to amend it to the to that temporary tent that's set up. Yeah. But um, oh, I thought you were talking about the agreement for the no. complete streets. No, but if you could follow up on that too, that would be oh, good. <laughs> okay. I'll follow up on that. That's what I. Said. What was yeah. the other thing that you sent them in regards to the uh, the servant of alcohol in the outdoor tent? Okay. Well, why to... don't I tell him? When I, I'll talk to Chip and I'll tell him to get a hold of you, Brian. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. All right. I'll see hey, you hey, Keith. Later. Make sure he yeah. knows that. Hey, Keith. Make sure he knows that it's just a formality. That okay. we're all in favor of helping him out. I don't want him to get panicked that we're being big brother. Very good. Well, so well, right now he can serve food outside, right? It's just not the alcohol. Well, I'm sure he is, Fred, but uh, yeah. Yeah. we're trying to formalize it just so that we're crossing our I's and dotting our T's. All right. Okay. Right. All right. Thanks. Okay. I'll see everybody later. Bye. Okay, thanks, Bye, Keith. Keith. Okay, our other item on the agenda is the annual town meeting. Uh, discuss and sign the well the annual town meeting warrant that's scheduled for June 23rd, 2020 at 6 p.m. outside the Whateley Elementary School. Yep. Want me to just start running through it? Yeah, sure. yeah, these are pretty. These are pretty similar to what we went over before, right? Yep. Okay. Right. We just haven't voted on them. Yeah. Right. So June twenty third, elementary school, six o'clock. Rain dates June twenty fourth at six. Twenty fifth at six. Twenty sixth at six. Article one to accept annual reports of the officers of the town. Do we want to vote at the end or? What do we want? How do you want to do this? Let's do it like one page at a time. All right. Okay. Um, article two, authorize town treasurer to borrow money. Article three, authorize the select board to enter into contracts in excess of three years. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have to vote, but I, I move that we recommend all three of the first articles, the first three articles, one through three. Wait, why are we voting all on each page rather than voting just to accept the warrant at the end? Because there might be some articles that we don't want to accept. Fair point, okay. Okay, second the motion for the three articles. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Article four, town treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements with banks. Article five, to apply for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or private grant monies. Article six, to establish spending limits for the town's revolving fund. Article six, these are the, these are the same limits as FY20. Okay, and move we accept uh, articles four through six. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce. In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. All right, Article 7, to see if the town will vote to fix salaries or compensation of elected officers of the town beginning on July 1st. These are the amounts adjusted with the 2% COLA, and that's all that's on that page. 
Motion. Second. Roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Article 8 is the Water Department Enter uh, Enterprise Fund budget, um, $395,679. And that's the only one on that page, I think. Okay. Um, move to accept uh, Article 8. Second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Article 9 is the operating budget that is recommended by the, recommended by the Finance Committee. The one change from when we last met with the finance committee was to reduce the, I went by it, was to reduce the Tri-Town Beach budget it, by approximately, it's around $1,200. And the rationale for that was that they're not opening um, for this summer. So they wanted to, they felt okay reducing, um, I think they based it off of two thirds of the salaries. So. The lifeguards and such. Yeah, the lifeguard salaries times the wait least percentage. It was around a $1,200 um, reduction from what was originally in the budget. I think, it's, I think it's more than fine. My only question is, why wasn't this brought up in our joint meetings? Because we were all panicked about the level of funding and, and making sure that the tax rate stayed as close to the same as possible. And we were, we were trying to figure out what we were going to cut. And all of a sudden th this is brought up the next day. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Well, I was there. No Brian was there. Maybe, maybe Brian, you can comment too, but they went through the budget really line, almost line by line, department by department. And there was one person who was particularly vocal about anything that was closed. He wanted to make sure that got examined. Um, so uh, the Tritown Beach got a little less sympathy than other departments because they, they really aren't doing something in lieu of being open. And we sort of have trouble getting information from them and so on. So I think it is my feeling, and maybe Brian can, can either either say he feels the same way or not. They wanted to make some kind of a nominal cut because you know they can reinstate this money later if they really really need it, but they really haven't been communicative, and this needs to change. And I'm but, fine with that choice. I just I, I just wonder why 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 it wasn't discussed as a group. Oh, I'm sure it came up earlier, but they didn't actually make the cut. I, I think it came up at earlier meetings. Um, their kind of uh, feelings about the, the Tri-Town Beach, but it didn't come up at the most recent meeting where all of us were there. Okay. I don't think it's a conspiracy. The, the comment I have here, okay, Brian, these, this uh, fiscal 21 budget, that reflects the cost of living increase yes. for the salaries right yeah correct okay i guess you're you're i think you're going to put together an explanation of some of these articles yeah the handout i think it, it may be important for you know because i'm hearing other towns and other articles about the police department budget the police budget here is is what we're going up five thousand something could you scroll to that page for a minute yeah uh, we're a police department, you're up 5,000 to, and that's mostly because of the cost of living? And Jim's, and uh, Jim's contract. Jim's salary adjustment for his new contract. Okay, because people may look at that and, and uh, I don't know other, other budgets, well, they go up and down, but I guess just to be in a, position to explain that either whether you want to do it in a your uh, advanced guidance or, or just wait till the meeting when it comes up but okay
Okay, make a motion to approve the, this article. Second. Yep. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Um, Article 10 is to transfer $200,000 to reduce the tax levy. Article 11 is to transfer $100,000 from free cash to the General Stabilization Fund. Uh, move we uh, uh, approve Articles 10 and 11. Second. Okay, we'll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Brad, yes. Article 12 is to return the $50,000 that we appropriated out of the capital stabilization back to the capital stabilization. This was when we didn't know we had the money, the additional money from MassDOT for the Williamsburg Road Bridge. Um, Article 13 is the 21500 for the communications equipment due to the changeover of the, um, of the system to the state system in the, the I guess <laughs> the failing of the current uh, FERCOC system. I was trying to find a nice way to put it, but Article 14 is $8,000. Um, it's written to pay for repairs to the Whaley Elementary School roof, but that is to remove the skylights in the cafeteria. Um, uh, Article 15, 12,500 to pay for the expansion and resurfacing of the library parking lot. Um, I guess the argument for doing that now is that we're going to have a paving contractor doing the road. So there's some cost savings there. Article 16 is $13,750. That's for the purchase of the new five inch fire hose. This would be year two of, of three of the proposal. And article 17 is to transfer the sum of 80,810 to pay for the, the, uh, the debt service on the fire truck. And that'll be, this will be the last payment that the town has to make on that. Motion. Second. Okay. Uh, on, on item 17, Brian, yeah. did, did we in prior years approve something for incurred debt service for what, five years? And if that's true, do we need to say anything about eliminating that debt service? No. Oh, once it's paid off, it's, it's paid off. Okay, so we don't need any any reference to that. Okay. No. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Article 18 is the sum of $5,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund for Westbrook Road. Pumping station, Article 19, we should talk about this. So I recall a conversation that I had with, with Wayne. It was towards the end of last week. Um, now that it's dry and that the, the level of water in the wells have gone down, they are having, I don't know how, how all of this works, but they're having, they, their ability to pump water is lessened because of the filtration system. Um, so they the can pump they can as, pump? What's that? Like the volume they can pump is lower? Yes, something to do with um, the head pressure at the filters between the, once he pumps up the water from up the hill, mm -hmm. um, they lose pressure going through the filter. They lose pressure and they can't pump as much water into the system. Um, so what's being recommended is that they install booster pumps uh, between the well and the pump house to help pump the water up, um, essentially up that little hill to the pump house. Um, this, is, this is very last minute. Um, I texted Wayne on Friday asking if, if they needed something. Um, because we, I mean, my opinion is we, we don't want to hold another special town meeting in, in two weeks from now if, if it keeps getting dry and they can't pump enough water. 
Mm -hmm. um, is this coming from the enterprise fund? Yeah, it's coming from their retained earnings, which is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's over not, 100,000. It doesn't yep. affect the tax rates. No. Yeah. And it won't affect the water rates directly. Hmm. Um, yeah, at some point it might, but yeah. <coughs> so that's, well, it's added. Um, kind of going on, on, you know, trusting Wayne that he knows what he needs and um, it's not going to come back next week and say, oh, no, I need something else. Um, but was was the, this is kind of related to the, well, the, the pumps for the manganese. There wasn't money in that and borrowing for that to cover this item? I asked him that question this morning, and no, it, it, it wasn't. I wonder whether it wasn't anticipated. It was not anticipated, is right. my understanding. So, yeah. You know, you can't anticipate everything that arises in a project, obviously. Okay, I, well, I, I make a motion to approve the, well. Let's second it. Doing a whole bunch of articles. Let's continue, I guess, from oh. this page. Yeah. <coughs> Article 20, uh, Article 20, this is to authorize a lease purchase of an excavator. 21, and Fred, I'll get back to your question in a, in a second. Um, Article 21 is to uh, authorize a highway department to for, for a lease purchase of a wood chipper. Article 22 um, is to transfer the sum of $12,000 from free cash to pay for the first year payment on the lease purchase agreement. Um, so, there's not, you can see there's an article for the first year appropriation for the wood chipper, but there's not one for the excavator. Right. Um, and the we had talked about this with the finance committee, um, and I think I included it in an email, but I apologize if I haven't. Um, the enterprise, the water commissioners, who we originally thought were going to contribute the $10,000 towards the excavator, have decided to no longer do that. Um, so the proposal from Keith is that he use chapter 90 monies for the first year payment. Um, and because it's, because it's chapter 90 funds, there would be no article to appropriate money. Oh, okay. I think that's that for that page. It might mean that's where it comes from in all subsequent years. <laughs> but, yeah, right. um, he needs to be careful about precedent setting. Well, then could he use for Article 22, he could use Chapter 90 funds for that as well? I, would, I wouldn't think so. I don't know, but that would, after these project requests, I mean, he's at 15,710, that would bring us down to like zero. Five. Mm -hmm. but, but we could, could, it's a question for future years, I guess. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion on these articles? Can I make a motion to approve these articles on page nine? Second. Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Article 23 is uh, to appropriate and transfer the sum of $5,499.90 for Frontier for electrical corridor holes, repairing the central clock system and repairing the exterior and interior intercom system. Article 24 is um, CPA articles. This is the beginning of the CPA articles. Article 24, um, $7,750 for admin. Um, 15,500 for open space, 15,500 for affordable housing, and the remainder of the 73,250 going to the budgeted reserve, um, debt service of 43,000. The reason why there's not a, um, a line item for, for transferring, um, money to the, his, the, um, historical reserves is that the town hall 
loan debt service covers that covers that obligation that that we spend a certain amount in each category. Okay. Article 25 is 13,200 um, CPA funds for the restoration of gravestones in the cemeteries. And that's that for that page. Make a motion to accept the, those, those uh, warrant articles. Second. Now, there's a question, this like article 25 comes from the uh, unreserved fund balance and further up, you show a fund, unreserved fund balance. Is this 13 to come out of the 73 to 50? 73, the CPA accounting's <coughs> confusing. That's for the budgeted reserves. All right. The budgeted reserves is different than the unreserved fund balance. The unreserved fund balance is equivalent to, let's just, it, it's kind of equivalent to the town's free cash. Oh. This is all their leftover, all their leftover funds from prior years, and it's up. I don't have the exact figure, but it's up over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? No. Okay. Roll call vote. Joyce. Favor. Jonathan. Yeah. Fred. Yes. <clears throat> 26, this is the appropriation of um, $60,000 for the Waitley Center Woods project, 27,000 from the open space reserve and 33,000 from the on-reserve fund balance. 27 is $10,000 from open space reserves um, for the open space and recreation plan update. 28 is to appropriate and transfer the sum of $11,000 for an APR. 33 acres of land on Long Plain Road. Article 29 is um, to appropriate and transfer the sum of $10,750 for another APR on 20 acres of land on River Road. Okay, um, then uh, move we accept uh, Articles 26 through 29. Second. Any uh, discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Joyce. In favor. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Article 30 and 31 are to allow firefighters who are reaching the age of 65 to continue. That's um, William Smith and Gary Stone. Article 32, and this is new language from town council. This is that would enable the town to start the process um, when we're ready um, of the actual merger of the, of the Whitley Water District with the Water Department. Okay. That um, I would uh, make a motion. Uh, second. It's articles 30, 31, 32. Any uh, discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Approved. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. 33, <clears throat> proposed general bylaw. This is a, a Waitley Scenic Roads bylaw. Um, it allows the, um, the waiver of public hearings for really situations where we don't think that the, there's gonna be much impact. Um, we don't think uh, the Historical Commission Planning Board and, <clears throat> and the tree warden, who's Keith, um, have been the ones developing this. So it just, I think it helps them handle the scenic roads bylaw um, okay. job more efficiently. I would um, move we uh, approve this um, article 33. That's the only okay. one that... Brian, this only is a majority vote. It's not two thirds for a bylaw. No, nope, only zoning bylaws require two thirds vote. Oh, okay. Roll call vote, Joyce. Approved. Jonathan? Yep. Brad, yes. 34, now we'll start um, zoning amendments. Um, Article 34, this would amend the Aquifer Protection District um, to include the subparagraph R there, which reads storage of, man this, so this would prohibit the storage of manure unless such storage is within a structure designed to prevent the generation and escape of contaminated runoff and leachate. 
Okay, I would move we uh, accept Article 34. Second. We'll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Article 35, amend the town zoning bylaws. A table of use regulations as follows. Um, so these are hard to see, so I put them in. in um, I've highlighted them. So they yeah. put the, the abbreviation AC after um, KW where highlighted. Um, I've got a question about the, the ground mounted for, um, can you go up a little bit, Brian, please? Yeah. And I apologize for not noticing this before, but why? Oh, I see. So the only difference is the the size of the of the ground mounted is special permit. That's the difference. Okay. That, no, 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 no worries. That's okay. Never mind. Should we take this one at a time? Mm, yeah, I, I move we accept Article Thirty Five. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. We'll call vote. Joyce. Approved. Jonathan. Yep. Fred, yes. Article 36 is a lengthy article. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you guys have had a chance to read it. Um, I've been emailing back and forth with um, with uh, the folks uh, with lots of questions. Um, uh, in the end, we we disagree about at least one thing, and I don't know if it's a big enough deal for me to kind of hold up our approval. Um, but that is the one where the planning board wants to have the um, something from the power company saying what's going to change in the infrastructure in town, what equipment would have to be installed. Um, and they think it's no big deal to get it. Um, and I I know we have trouble getting that information from them when there's a poll hearing. So um, that's kind of, uh, to me, I just wanted that to have a, a deadline attached to it. That if the, com the power company doesn't respond within a certain time period, that doesn't withhold their permit because by you know, giving that kind of power to the power companies, they can just but withhold that permit and, and sink any particular project. So I had that concern. Um, they don't think it's that big a deal that this kind of thing that power companies do it all the time that they not, not well they delay all the time but that this kind of um, impact statement is something they have to come up with before they go to the ZBA anyway so um, I don't know uh, exactly how much to to I don't know pout about that for lack of a better word um, the other thing though would absolutely have to change and that is and and okay i'm a physics teacher so i want them to get the units right but when they put limits on the batteries they say and i'll find it probably find it in my uh, email more quickly than um because uh, uh, it'll tell me what page to look on here as well um, there we go. Um, so, right, in um, section H, part six, at the very end, it says, and this is on page, top of page 22 yep. in the warrant, it says the, um, battery storage units that'll be limited only i mean the thing the, the other things in yellow were all fine um just that last line um yeah, limited to only those needed to support the solar installation at that site um which isn't particularly meaningful um and their kilowatt hour capacity may not exceed that of the installation that's extremely vague or it's possibly something that no one could ever 
uh, comply with because the capacity of the batteries is given in kilowatt hours. The capacity of the installation is given in KWAC. Okay, you can never have any number of kilowatt hours equaling a number of kilowatts AC if you don't specify that you're comparing a number that has two different units. I think they basically have to say that the number of kilowatt hours for battery capacity uh, cannot exceed the number of kilowatt hours AC of the installation and put inserting the word capacity in there. I gave them a couple different wordings that I thought were appropriate. And Judy's response was, um, uh, I'll leave the kilowatt issue to those with more expertise than I. Okay, I consider myself someone with more expertise on this, um, but I'm sure we can clarify it somehow. So I think they're amenable to some kind of, of, uh, of friendly amendment on that. And I think there are going to be enough scientists and physicists there who understand why this is really bad to have uh, a vague comparison between two numbers that have different units. Um, what if they put the capacity of the installation in watts? Oh, then you can put a thousand times more batteries than if you read it as if it's in kilowatt AC, right? So if you, I think if you don't specify the units, either people can abuse it, or if somebody really wanted to stop some solely, they could say, oh, well, battery capacity is in kilowatt hours and this other is in different units. You can never make batteries that are going to do that. So forget it. Now, probably the second one would be a little ridiculous and people would not really get away with that. Um, but if they don't say it now, they'll, they will effectively, someone can say, well, my capacity in watts is this much. I can put a thousand times more batteries in than, than we would really want. I think the, the, the limit of the number of kilowatt hours of the batteries being equal to the number of KWAC for the facility is actually a reasonable limit. Um, that gives you, uh, like if the, uh, if the array went down, it could keep putting out for one hour the energy that that array would provide otherwise. And that's exactly what you want for a battery backup. It gives you basically one hour to sort out your electrical problems. That's not unreasonable. Do we need it to give a thousand hours? No, I don't think we need it to give a thousand hours. Um, so I think that's something that needs to get fixed. And I don't really know whether the strategy is uh, to um, say we, I mean, I, I don't know what to say at the end, uh, the select board recommends or not, or if we can actually say recommends with amendment. And I don't know whether we can put an amendment in the <laughs> in the draft of the town meeting warrant or if that has to be something done on the floor of town meeting. But that one really has to be addressed. Well, hey, Joyce, I, I, I completely understand your interest in accuracy and specificity. Um, and I think the only way to deal with this is probably through a friendly amendment. My concern is that the friendly amendment might confuse more people than I, I, I think you're going to confuse a lot of people. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We got to, we got to be able to really have, have battery backup simplified in mm -hmm. whatever amendment. And I'm not sure that's yeah. as easy as. It doesn't need to change a lot of words. Okay. You can change the words in that sentence to their kilowatt hour capacity may not exceed that of the installation in KWAC. They've, okay. uh, they've added a couple and changed maybe one word. Or you can say their kilowatt hour capacity may not exceed that of the installation in KWAC. I, oh, actually, I think that's the same thing. You could change the word that into the capacity to be make you know make sure you're talking about the capacity. I mean, they went to a lot of trouble to put in another bylaw to change the units of capacity 
to KWAC. All right? I think that's I think that's really I mean they must know this is important on some level. Well, I mean all I my interest is mostly to make sure that you know obviously the future of of solar is largely predicated on the availability of battery backup. I mean that's that's the battery's the game changer. Mhm. Mm um and and I don't want to seem unfriendly to battery backup. No, I don't I don't think we are. I think this would actually be a good thing to just get it right. Okay. I, I, again, as long as I, I'm with you on the specificity, I just want to make sure that people understand that, that being solar friendly also by definition has to be battery friendly. It just does. Otherwise you're really not solar friendly beyond small scale stuff. Right. Why, why can't we make that change here that Joyce is suggesting and then at the end, say recommended by select board with with amendment or, or to change, and present it that way. And then at the at the annual meeting, I guess we could explain the the amendment that we made to this. I think we can't make amendments to this text because this is what they had at all their public hearings and their meetings, and this is what they approved. Okay. But you can make amendments on town floor. Um, the amendments cannot make it um, more restrictive. Um, and uh, I suppose you could argue by putting in the units, I'm making it more restrictive. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I, I think it just clarifies the intention. So. so, so Joyce, let me ask you a question. If if you were to propose a a friendly amendment on the floor that didn't pass, would you regret voting for this uh, warrant article in this meeting? Because that's, I think, the question. It would certainly come up in my physics class in the fall, and I'd use it as an example of why we need people to understand units and dimensions. Um, it would go right next to the town of Deerfield being very concerned in their planning board about a six milliwatt solar array, right? I mean, it's... Well, I think that's a little bit more of a, an issue, but okay. Well, that was the Greenfield recorder, really. They, they were badly reporting. It was not a six milliwatt solar array. Um, that, you know, when, when you get things wrong, it's, it's important. Right, so, uh, but Mike, Mike, but there's no guarantee the that... Is, the way it's written, you could actually put in a heck of a lot more batteries than I think. Right. I, I get that, doing. but. So if, look, it, if I it were not to pass, I guess I'd probably still vote for it, but I would rather make it accurate and good and, and, have, and try to get a friendly amendment. And I think I've kind of started that conversation with Judy already um, about offering a friendly amendment. And um, I don't know if, if they will offer it, if I give her the wording, that sort of thing might, I mean, that can happen all before the meeting, but the, the amendment can't be made until the floor town meeting. That's why I don't know what to say here as far as recommended by the select board. Well, my concern is if that we don't recommend, if it doesn't come as recommended from the select board, it's gonna make the whole thing a lot more difficult to pass potentially. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I think, and, and again, you. you you obviously do what you want, but I think that you, but that, that the specificity, you, you have to have a leap of faith, essentially, that people will accept the specificity on the floor or even the planning board might accept. Got garbled up here. What's that? Your voice got garbled up. I didn't quite catch oh, it. What I'm saying is, is that you've got to make a leap of faith that the specificity and a friendly amendment will be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, other, otherwise, you know, that's my hope in this. And because we can't make an amendment right now, there's nothing we can do. We can either say thumbs up or thumbs down at this point. Yeah. 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 That's what that, see, so that's the thing I wanted to discuss because I didn't really know what, you know, what's the best plan. So you're, you're saying, well, let's, 
work towards the friendly amendment being um, at least offered and explained and accepted on town meeting floor uh, to take care of that one last little point. Um, I sure would like, I think Fred might've mentioned this at a previous meeting, I sure would like them to not have their meetings opposite ours in the future. Um, and it's really, well, they were only opposite ours because we had to meet with the finance committee. So I, I don't know how to take care of that in the future, but um, it, it was ridiculous. The one time I could get to their hearing, uh, I could only be there for a half hour because I had to get back to the finance committee and select board meeting. And they would not call on me to let me put any input in on this at all. So um, I, I really didn't, I did not care for that process. Do we know who's going to present this, Brian? Uh, somebody from the planning board. I'm not sure who's going to. Yeah, it. thank you, but <laughs> uh, probably, probably Judy. I would guess. That's what she's done the last one. Yeah, I've seen in the past. If they you know, if, if they understand they need a friendly amendment, then they will often offer it themselves. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we had the same discussion. I remember at our last annual town meeting, there was an amendment being proposed to some bylaw change. I forget what it was. And there was considerable dis discussion about the amendment and people wanted to see it in writing and, and asked why wasn't it the, the Warren article write up changed to include that amendment and all. And we went on and on and the moderator finally, uh, I, I guess, threw his hands up and said, let's vote. I mean, I could see us going through the same thing here. If we're not in agreement. If it's, I think if it's a, if it's as small a change as what I'm proposing in the wording of that one phrase, then I think that's something that can be repeated slowly enough for everyone to write it down on their own copies. Um, I think that the, the exact wording has to be given to the clerk and the, we can read it as many times as people need. It's not a huge change. And I think that's really important that it's just uh, taking care of an important detail. You know, if I had been able to be at their hearing, I could have corrected it at their hearing, you know? Brian, what do you suggest? Do you suggest that we have a leap of faith here? Do we not recommend it, but we indicate why and we say, well, this change, you know, but but if they offer a friendly amendment, we say well, now we're in favor of it. I mean, I, I, I would be okay with recommending it. I think you should um, do that. And, and because, you know, it's 99% of this is really, is really good. Um, and I think that the friendly amendment is the way to go. And if it doesn't happen, shame on us, right? And shame on the planning board. Okay. Okay. All right. well, I guess I'm moving that we uh, recommend uh, that uh, Article 36. Yep. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Brad, yes. Article 37. Amend the town zoning bylaw. Terms defined to add the term resource replacement fee. And to add in the letters AC under large scale ground mounted solar electric installation. I would. Um uh, um, move that we accept this article or approve this article. Second. Approve this article. Okay. Roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Brad? Yes. That is the last article. Okay. When do you want this wrapped up by Brian? Um, if you could give me to two o'clock and then if you're available to swing by and sign. 
I'll come by around three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can come later between what, three and four? Okay. Um, okay. I guess I get to what how late are you there till, Brian? Um hopefully I'll be leaving around four. Okay. But um then I'll try to get there uh something like three forty five. Okay. Try not to run over Fred. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um Do we have any other items to discuss at this meeting? I've got a question. Okay, and it's more directed at Brian. Yeah. Um, apparently, there was a, on Egypt Road this weekend, there was a um, classic car music show. I know nothing about it. Mm. Is that permit required? What's a classic car music show? Uh, on I, I'm, Egypt Road? I'm sort of wondering whether whether it moved from Tom's. Yeah, well, does Tom's have a permit for theirs? Or do they just do it? Yeah. Um, I don't know of any permit that they get. Right, but so so the so the resident and, and again I'm not I'm not judging. I'm just I, I'm asked I'm inquiring whether a permit is required. I mean I guess it's like anyone having a party at their house, right? Yeah. And we have no jurisdiction over people having a lot of people at their house without masks or COVID, blah, 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 right? Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe the Board of Health may have a say, but it, it's, it's a gray area, really, at this point. Yeah. If I mean, we clearly out. have jurisdiction over town buildings and that sort of thing, but we don't over private residents, right? No. Right. I mean, if it's all outdoors and it's a, it's an event, yeah, it, it gets messy. So in, in the world of non-COVID, having a, having a bunch of classic cars in your yard or wherever, who cares? Right. As long as you're not, as long as you're not doing it at 10 o'clock after the noise decibel is dropped, et cetera, et cetera. And as long as it doesn't impact traffic. Right, right. Yeah. So the only, the only issue is whether COVID changes that or not. Yeah. Okay. Can you ask Fran? Yep. I, it's just a point of clarity more than anything. I'm not taking a stance. I just want to make sure that we all know what, you know, is, is, being suggested and what and that we're trying to adhere to the governor's um, policies as much as possible on this stuff so that we don't have an outbreak. Right. Was it was it all outdoors from what you could tell? I think so. I don't know. Okay. But, but there still is is the requirement of what less than 10 people for a gathering? My understanding is that does not apply um, um, to unenclosed spaces. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure that's true because if you, if because all all athletic practices are outside and or these days and and they have to be under ten and yep. adhere to social distancing. But I think it's a different order, though. Okay. It's come up a couple times on on um, on some of the calls that I've been on. So if it's, if it's private property and it's outdoors, then I don't think the Board of Health has jurisdiction. So someone could have 100 people on their property if they wanted to. Outdoors. Outdoors, right, 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 right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's the interpretation. I, I'll check with Fran, but... Okay. Well, have we made any decision on allowing tag sales? Oh yeah. Um, no. 
I so think that would be better for a meeting where that item is posted on the agenda because I think people would have some input on that. Because we're kind of wandering off into other items yeah. not anticipated or just general discussion. But I, I would be uncomfortable making a decision about that at this meeting since that okay. was not mentioned on our posted agenda. Okay, but we haven't taken a position on that, right? We are not issuing tax sale permits right now. We're not. That's that's what I gathered from the other our prior meeting. So Okay. Uh, can I make a motion that we adjourn? Second. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. We'll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes.